Dear students, in this module, we'll look at the Nusinov-Jacobson algorithm. It is one of the dynamic programming algorithms that are used to predict the RNA secondary structure. As you know, dynamic programming is an approach that tries to solve the complex RNA secondary structure prediction problem by breaking it into smaller problems. Let's take a look. So, as I just mentioned, Jacobson, Nusinov, or simply NJ algorithm is used to predict the secondary structures in the RNAs. Dynamic programming divides the problem and then conquers it. So, NJ algorithm does that in a very nice and easy way for us. The algorithm was proposed in 1980 and that it uh, computes the secondary structures with the most or the highest number of nucleotide couplings. One wonders that if the bonding energy is different for different nucleotides, then why would one consider the longest coupled RNA secondary structure? But of course, this is just the beginning and NJ can actually help us to factor in the energies as well as we'll see later. Let's consider our matrices. As you know that the RNA sequence was written on top in the case of Zucker's algorithm as well as on the left. So in NJ or Nusinov Jacobson algorithm we are going to take the same approach. We are going to create a matrix and place the RNA sequence on top as well as on the left. The left side is labeled as I and the top is labeled as J. Each index of the nucleotide is written here on top of the nucleotide for ease in calculation. So once you set about to use the NJ algorithm, you can create a matrix like this. You can place your nucleotides on top and on the left side as well as label I and J. And then in the next step, what you can do is you can set the diagonal of this matrix to zero. Let's take a look. All of these values are zero. These positions are essentially where I is equal to J. So all such positions are set to zero. As a next step, the lower tri diagonal is also set to zero as shown here in red. So this is how you begin to solve the Nusinov-Jacobson algorithm. So once you have initialized your matrix and you have set the indices of each nucleotide on top and on left, then you are ready to move forward. In order to score any position in this matrix that is not yet computed, so you know that we have put zeros on the diagonal and the lower tri diagonal now but the remaining positions still remain to be calculated so how are we going to calculate those positions let's see so the score for each position above the diagonal still remains to be calculated and is represented by s here at the ith and jth position so the score for any i j where i can be between 0 and the maximum length of the uh, RNA sequence and j can be between 0 as well and the maximum length of the RNA sequence. So we can compute the score by looking at these very simple equations. Let me help you by explaining this to you. So the score is essentially the maximum from these four values. So you just have to compute these four values and you have to take the maximum from them. Whichever is the maximum, you take that value and you put it in the ij position in the matrix. So what are these four different values? Si plus 1 and J is actually your lower element. 
So if you remember, you are looking at I in the vertical axis and J in the horizontal axis. So essentially, I plus 1 would mean if you are located at I, I plus 1 would be the lower element. So you have to look at the score in the element that is below your current position. You have to register its score and then consider the next one. So the next one is S I J minus 1. So as I was just explaining, so I was in the vertical axis and J was in the horizontal axis. So if you are located at J here, J minus 1 would put you on this side. So this will mean that you are looking at the element that is on to your left. So the score will be the maximum value from the two values that exist either below the current position or to the left of the current position. Now let's consider the third score that we have to look at. The third score is essentially the diagonal below your current position. Let me elaborate. If this is your I and this was your J, then I plus 1 and if this is your current position, okay, so I plus 1 would be here and J minus 1 would be here. So you are essentially looking for this value. So this is diagonally positioned below your current position. So this means that this score is the value of your diagonally lower element. So now we have three elements. One was the lower element, the second was the left element and the third is the diagonally located element below the current position. What is this E? Let me clear it out for you. Okay. So what is this energy of pairing? As I just mentioned that you have to take the maximum from the left, from the bottom and from the diagonal elements. But the diagonal element, if it is matching and coupling with the nucleotide, then you have to consider the energy that is released as a result of the formation of the hydrogen bond. So that is represented here by E. Of course, it is simple to understand now that if you're talking about the lower element, there is no additional hydrogen bond that is formed. If you're talking about the left element, there is no hydrogen bond that is formed. But in the case of the diagonal element, you have to consider the energy that is released as a result of the nucleotide coupling. The fourth element in this is the case where you have to look at all the left row and all the elements in the bottom column. This is very simple to understand in a manner that you have to consider two secondary structures coming together as well. So I'll explain this in the form of an example later. So simply put, this is the entire sum of the left and bottom column and then you can create these sums and take a maximum of it and then out of these four you can select the maximum value. So here let me give you a small demonstration. So as you know this diagonal is set to zero and we would like to compute the values at all of these positions in the matrix. So let's see how it is done by looking at the Nusinov algorithm. 
So you have to take the maximum from the left, from the bottom and from the diagonal. So in this case, as you can see, the diagonal is 0, the left is 0 and the bottom is 0. So you put a 0 on this position as well. Similarly, if you go for this position, then you have a 0 on the left, a 0 on the diagonal, a 0 on the bottom. And the maximum from these three values is still 0. But why do we have a 1 here? So the reason is that U can be coupled with an A. So in this case, this is the pseudo energy that is given in the equation for the NJ algorithm. Similarly, if you look at this one, this is due to the formation of bond between G and C and the three zeros have no difference, but the diagonal element gives this one because C and G are coupled. So in this way, we can create a matrix of sequences. We can put the dry diagonals to be zero and then we can start filling each position of the matrix towards determining the secondary structure.